Who are your competitors? So we have um, a couple now that, you know, so now the business has grown to, uh, we have consumer products in three categories. So the, one of our most famous one is um, our phone service, which allows people to save money on expensive prison phone calls. And then we have our financial services, which makes it easy for people to send money to like commissary books. Think of it as like a Venmo or a cash app. It just makes the process really easy and seamless. And then finally, our postal mail services, which is where we started. Um, but that allows people to send things like greeting cards, postcards, photos, letters, et cetera, um, directly from their cell phone, tablet, computer. And then now we have a, a, a B2G or business to government facing product in addition to our consumer product that we sell to institutions to allow them to scan and screen the mail that they receive. So the problem that institutions have is that particularly with the increased use of synthetic drugs, opioids, K2, Suboxone, things like that, um, there's more synthetic drugs coming into institutions and these can easily be incorporated to paper or ink. So it's not something you can prevent and screen traditional ways. So there's no way to know that, you know, a letter has um, opioids in it or not, you know, so without significant expense in lab testing and things like that. So basically what our software does is allow them to authenticate to make sure that something was shipped from a secure facility and it doesn't have contraband in it. Because there's been a number of cases where spiking inmate overdoses and deaths and then in addition to staff members getting sick from working in the mail rooms and things like that. So um, with, with, um, with those two products, um, you know, our focus has took, taken us down a path of doing, being more involved in government, being more part of policy, you know, with laws and policy getting written. I've gotten a crash course on how to navigate things through Congress and stuff like that, really not understanding how government works, not having a better understanding how government really moves behind all the smoke and mirrors of what you see on TV, what's really moving initiatives in the government. Um, and, um, you know, that's really the, the pace and where we are today. In terms of your business model, is this an independent company? Meaning, do you guys have to split profits with the facilities or with the, with the state itself? No, so that's what's different from us, and, and, and I, I don't think I even answered your question, your last question well. So when you look at the competition in our space, you think of the two big players in, in this area is like Securus and Global Telling. And those are the ones that get all the bad press about predatory practices and overcharging for phone calls and things like that. Um, the main key distinction between how they do business and how we do business is the industry, what Securus and Global Telling does is that they will give the prison a contract and say, we'll handle your phone calls. We'll do your phone calls for you. And in response for that, we're going to give, if you give us the contract to handle your phone calls, we're going to charge the consumers whatever you want. And then we're going to promise you a kickback for giving us this contract. So if you give us this contract, we'll give you back $100,000 a year for giving us this contract. And because of that business model, it creates a situation where the prices are higher yep. because now they had it the kickbacks that they're giving the facilities into the pricing and the consumers, you know, the family members, they're the ones that end up having to pay for that. Our process is basically, you know, strictly to the consumers. If, if we can save you money on phone calls, it's cheaper for you to be our customer than to not use us. So for example, if you don't use us, you're going to pay $70. If you're talking to someone in federal prison, if you use us, that same cost is going to be 18, which is the lowest it can be. And we don't even, that's not even our cost. That's just the lowest that the prison is going to charge is 18. So not being our customer is more expensive than being our customer. So um, on that side, the consumer just pays for that. And that's five bucks a month. Um, when it comes to what we sell to the, to the government, the government pays for that and there's no kickbacks involved. It comes directly out the operational budget. So our approach is very different. We, we don't believe in the kickback system. I think that's part of the main reason why the market industry is so predatory is because that's probably one of the only legal um, kickbacks that you'll see, particularly in government contract, where it's legal to award the government back money based on them awarding you a contract. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.